One of the reasons why we're discussing worship today, again, in the setting of Sunday morning as our focus, is I was on a leadership podcast for churches and pastors, and it was training, it's a training podcast for churches, leaders, pastors, and just to help us grow. And I went through 200 episodes just searching through, Mm -hmm. and guess how many I found on the topic of worship in church? How many do you think? One. Actually, none. Oh, my. I found none. So one of the reasons why we are doing He is Worthy series about worship is to help us understand worship, to help us really grasp what it means to worship God. And today is on the topic of coming together on Sunday mornings to worship because it's just as important as when we worship throughout the week. I, I'm all about every day worshiping God. You've heard my heart on that for the past two weeks. But there's something about coming together as a body of Christ to worship that is so important. And that's why I brought Angela up here, my mom, because, well, tell, tell a little bit about what you have been doing all your life and then, you know, your role here at Calvary. Well, I started going to church, I think, when I was four. So I've been in church a long time. I've sang all my life, loved to sing. My mom played the guitar. My sister, my mom, and I were actually a trio, and we sang in churches. But we would sing in the car and harmonize. When our hearts were aching, we were singing about, you know, songs that had to do with our, we were rejoicing. So I've been raised singing, worshiping the Lord, and uh, led Children's Church as a 12-year-old, led the worship in that and helped guide that for years, uh, taking it over. And then uh, went to Bible college to call the music courses I could, but my heart was just so much for the Word. You know, I wanted to know the Word. And uh, I think more of the words you know, the easier it is to worship. And, uh, but let's just get to when I came here. Um, I started a choir. I think we had nine people with the first choir. But when we moved over to this building here, I uh, saw the need, and pastor saw the need for uh, some guidance and direction for the worship team. So I started doing that. Now, I wasn't leading at the time because we had people who could lead, but I was doing some guiding and training for that. And uh, then God pushed me. <laughs> literally two people who were in the Air Force that were doing worship left at one time. And it was like, okay, Angela, it's your turn. And that's what he had to do to me. I have to be honest with you because it's an, it's an awesome privilege, but a huge responsibility. So pray for your worship leaders. And so I led worship until uh, with, and training other people to do it too, with the team um, since somewhere in the early 90s or mid 90s, something like that, until about 2011, when my knee said, that's enough. (laughs) And God said, you know, give the baton over, and I did. So um, I've taught worship classes. I did a seminar right in here during Sunday school class on the dimensions of worship. I love to worship, yeah. So can you just define worship one more time for us? Because we started the series off like that. And maybe we need to recap. Maybe this is the first time for some guests here today. Okay. Define worship, and you can define it. You know, we're going to define what worship is all day or yeah. on Sunday. Mm-hmm. What would you just define worship in general to God? Well, in general, what I usually tell people is worship is my response to God. God is, all, God is a revealing God, and he's revealing who he is all the time. So whether it's in a sunrise or a sunset, It's in the eyes of a beautiful child or in that newborn baby. Um, He's revealing himself through nature. He's revealing himself through his word. So as we're in the word, it's like there are times I just have to stop and praise the Lord. Or there's times I have to stop and say, oh, God, forgive me. That's worship, too. It's my natural, spontaneous response. And some of you who are more introverted, you feel something inside. You may not say something but let it out because God wants to hear your response. So worship to me is a response. It's also my obedience, which you have said. So anytime, I tell you, at one point in this church, I went away for a sabbatical and I fasted and prayed that whole time for, I guess it was three days. And God changed my view on worship because of 
of uh, Romans 12.1. I read it in the message. You've got to read it sometime. But it said, now here's what I want you to do. Taking your everyday, ordinary life. Not just your coming on Sunday. Now, it doesn't say that. That's me saying it. Not just your coming on Sunday, but take your ordinary life. You're getting up. You're going to work. Uh, making dinner for the children. Loving on your husband. Mowing the grass. Washing the car. Take that and offer it to me as your worship. Take everything you are and every gift and skill I've given you and use it for my glory. That's worship. Yeah, that's, that's good. I'm sorry, I'm preaching, aren't I? No, that's why we're here. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, she could be on this stage by herself. I just like hanging out with her, talking about worship, so that's why I'm and here. And I like it too. Um, it's interesting that you mention a child. Mm -hmm. Because when uh, Connor was born, I was in awe of mm -hmm. God. Like, just the fact that this little baby boy, you know, just precious, innocent kid, you know, came to us, to this world, you know, it's just amazing to mm -hmm. me. So when I, I, I personally, am, I respond to God a lot with creation. Yeah, You know, being too. out in nature, uh, seeing, seeing what God does through people or a baby, I was just blown away by it, so. Mm -hmm. I have a question um, for you. What is the value of cor corporate worship? You know, why is it so important to come here on Sunday, Sunday morning together as the body of Christ? Okay, let me define, uh, define corporate first. I think a lot of you know what corporations are. But corporate means belonging together, a united group. So what it's saying is, we who belong together, because according to Corinthians 12, we were all baptized at our salvation into the body of Christ, which makes us one. So we're one group. Even though we live in different houses and go to work at different places, we're one. Because we've been baptized into his body. We're each a part of that body. You might be the you know, the finger, or you might be the elbow, or the knee, or something, but we're a part of that body. So when we come together, we're actually reflecting the glory of God and his body together. And so there's a value in it, because God saw a value in it. In the Old Testament, um, just him calling out a nation that was his very own. He says, I'm, you're Abraham, you know, I'm gonna make you the father of many, many nations. And, uh, and that's where the 12 tribes came from. And, and as you talked about, I think a couple of weeks ago, when they came out of Egypt, they came out to worship. And God set up a worship system for them, and he gave them orders about how to do that. Um, it might not be your most interesting reading in the Old Testament, Leviticus, but no, I got something not. out of it, yeah. And um, anyway, so they would, when, when they would go to the tent of meeting, uh, Moses would go in to pray, and everyone would be at the entrance of their tent, joining in, praying, and worshiping, until that cloud of the presence of God left the tent of meeting. So I, we don't know if they were there yeah. 15 minutes or two hours, 10. Yeah, that to me is a powerful portion of Scripture in Exodus 33. Yes. Where Moses goes to the tent of meeting, which is the temporary tabernacle for God's presence. It's where God comes and shows up to meet with Moses. And so God is on earth meeting with Moses. And when he goes, the entire nation of God's people, the Israelites, mm -hmm. stand at the entrance of their tent until the, the presence of God departs from over the tent of meeting. Isn't right. that interesting? It's it just, is. Wow. But one of the things it did for the people was it unified them. They had one purpose. Let's wait to hear on God. Let's worship God. Let's be all of us at the same time. And I think that's what coming on Sunday morning reflects. We belong together, but we're all here leaning in. What does God have for me today? How can I respond? And I love that too because, uh, you know, as a pastor, I enjoy leading the church, but it's not just me. Right. You know, all of us take our play a role in worshiping God. All of us are particip participants mm -hmm. in the journey with God, not just Moses. Right. They had their role. Moses had his role. Right. And then obviously God has his role. And you have a role because many times I've been blessed by seeing some of you in your worship. 
and um, I won't go into all those details, but I am. I'm blessed. So go go, but go into a little bit. You okay. Know, so Sunday mornings, why is it so powerful? Like well. it's so powerful because God inhabits the praises of His people. I think uh, you see that verse in Psalm 22:3. She's going to put it up there. But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. And what that verse means there is like He pitches a tent over us as we're in here. It's like we're enclosed in His presence and he comes up close. His presence, the very word presence in Hebrew means face. So it's like we're coming face to face with God, up close and personal. Now, you can do that at home, but he promises when we come together that he pitches a tent over us and comes to dwell and enjoy our praises. Isn't that beautiful? Now, that's a reason to come together, right? I, I want to do a quick survey real quick as you look at your notes. Um, I, I've heard many times in Next Steps group that when people come in here, they're just, moved, they're just overwhelmed by the presence of God and sometimes just break out in tears and you don't know why you're crying. Shamelessly raise your hand if that's you. <laughs> yeah, Wow. See, that's just proof right there, you know, that Presence. God is showing up mm -hmm. when we come together mm -hmm. as the body of Christ to worship. He does inhabit our praise and our worship. And I'm telling you, I don't know how many people have told me that. Like, I'm just crying. I don't know why I'm crying, you know. And I just think it's funny, but it, I also am not surprised because right. God's presence is so amazing. Yes, and it it's is. tangible mm -hmm. when we come together. Yes, it is. And, and the other thing that happens, and I love this. This is my favorite thing. And a lot of people don't realize this. But in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 11 through 12, it says, both the one who makes people holy, which is Jesus, and those who are made holy are the same family. I'm the family of God. We are family. You are my brothers and my sisters. Hmm. Think about that for a minute. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. We're joint heirs with Jesus. He's our brother too. Interesting, isn't it? Jesus is God and Jesus is our brother. So he says, I will declare your name. And he's saying this like to God. So God, I'm going to declare your name, your character, who you really are. I'm going to reveal it to my brothers and sisters as we're in the assembly, okay? I will sing your praises. Wow. Jesus shows up, people, whether you see him or feel him or not. And I can remember the very first time we sang, The King is Among Us. Oh, my goodness, that song gave flight to my heart because God just revealed the king. I want you to, the king of kings, okay? Not just anyone. He, he just revealed how he was walking in and out of the pews, in and through us, and up and down the aisles. And he was ministering because he knows each one of our hearts and what we need. And he was revealing what we need. Maybe you need a revelation of how high and deep and wide and the breadth of God's love, and you're having a hard time receiving it. He can touch you right then and there wow. and enable you to receive it. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Now, you... Going back to that, you had told me before that you had a prophetic word. Yes, I that did. That's what Jesus was doing in the sanctuary. In the sanctuary, and I gave it that morning. And that's one of those gifts that we use in the congregation or in a gathering, whether it's small or whatever, and even sometimes one-on-one. -on -one. But God gave me a prophecy of what he was doing and letting people know what he was doing, that he was here, yeah. right mm -hmm. here, so near in this service, but I want you to realize something. I don't, well, I'm gonna talk about that later a little bit more, but he's in here too. He's in my spirit, he's in yes. my heart. He dwells here. So when we all come together mm -hmm. and we have God's spirit inside of us, I call that the collective presence of God. And it is powerful, yeah. very powerful. It's been powerful in my life. Because I may have my devotions at home, and I can hear from God, and I worship him, and things happen. But I tell you, some of the biggest things that have ever happened in my life have happened within the congregation and us meeting together. I, I, what I like, what I value about corporate worship is all of what you're saying, as well as 
it's that one intentional moment where you're coming to worship God. Like you're planning, you're getting dressed, you're brushing your teeth, you're mm -hmm. having breakfast, you're having maybe two cups of coffee, right? And you're showing up to do what? To worship God. And that, is, that should be our heart. We're going to get into right. our motives mm -hmm. and all that. But the Bible says, if you seek me you will with your heart, me. you will find me. Mm -hmm. And so like if we come in here on Sunday mornings with the intention of seeking God and worshiping him, he's going to show up. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're saying is that day that when you were singing, the king is among mm -hmm. us, he literally was among us. Yes. And he is whispering to our spirit. Mm -hmm. He's communicating to us going, uh, you need peace, don't you? Let me give you peace. Yeah. You need joy. Let me give you joy. Let me, let me speak this word to you today through the pastor. Amen. And you're going to hear it today. Today, you're going to hear it, even though, even though maybe a pastor has been saying it for a whole year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you showed up today, you're going to hear it. You're going to get it. Yes. I think that's the most beautiful thing. <laughs> I can remember in. pastor uh, doing a sermon series called It's Okay to Be Me. And that was in like the late 80s. Long time ago, guys. <laughs> and... Um, and I was struggling with my sense of self-worth, but I tell you, by the end of that series, God had enabled me to receive his worth. And pastor asked us to do something. He said, I want you to imagine that the cross, you're standing underneath the cross, and Jesus is on it. And of course, he's bleeding, and his blood is falling on you. I could not put myself underneath the cross. Now, here I'd been a Christian for years and years by then. I'd gone to Bible college, and I was the pastor's wife, and I could not put myself, I didn't feel worthy of the blood. I went home that afternoon, and after the kids were in bed, because I took afternoon naps, but that day I could not nap. And I told God, what is my problem that I can't put myself underneath that cross? Like, believe you're forgiven. Yes, believe really that, believe you're yeah. forgiven and worthy. And it's not about me. And he really got it through to me. Wow. Yeah, that it's not about you, Angela. It's about me. I've made you worthy. You would never be worthy enough. But I, my blood, that's what I see when I see you. I see the beauty of my spirit inside of you. Wow. That's good. I got it. But it took a whole series of sermons and, you know. Which I think may have been a record. <laughs> long series like 22 weeks we could do that again if we need to <laughs> sounds a like good a good one. topic i told him he needs to write the book yeah uh let's let's bring up another question why is singing such a prominent form of worshiping in christianity because you know for us who who maybe uh have not been gifted with the greatest voice or you know or maybe we're scared to sing in public. I mean, some of us are better singing in showers than we are, you know, here in public. So why, why do we have to sing? I mean, do we have to, or is it just, tell us. Well, I think the, we know the scripture says, um, you know, to sing. Uh, I, we have a scripture on that, which, um, which is um, Psalm 96, one and two. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth, all the earth. He didn't say all of you great singers. <laughs> he said all of the earth, everyone, sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Sing, sing. And I think there's something about, oh, sorry about that. Let me fix that, Jared. There's something about taking the very breath that God gives you and giving it back to him through your vocal cords, using your mind to think of the words, using your vocal cords and your body that is special. But one of the things I don't think we realize that God realized when he instituted singing, because you know it started in heaven, okay? It started in heaven. All of heaven sings to God, and Satan used to be the main worship leader. Think about that. So singing and worship is God, God's idea. But when we sing, open our mouths and let that come across. The vibrations of our music go through our whole body. You didn't know that, did you? And it actually changes, so to speak, the landscape, the attitude. But it does something in the brain. Now, this is really good. 
It changes the brain chemistry so that endorphins, which are feel-good hormones, are released. So if you come in here and you don't feel good, and you're down and out, and you're feeling broken, and you're grieving, sing anyway. I've done it. It works. It works. Sing anyway, because he does something with that gift of song, and he blesses us with it while he's being blessed. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for that. God is good. It's a universal language. It is. No matter what nation you go to, the farthest place where people may have never been, people sing. They sing when they work. They sing when they're happy. They sing when they're celebrating. They, there's music for everything. And I think most of you, I think one of the, the important things about it is what we sing, we remember. Yeah. How many of you remember? Do you know where, whose that was? So get up and get away. Oh, you deserve a break today. So get up and get away to McDonald's. That, yeah. I had no idea on that one. Okay. I was trying to see how many would remember without the words. The Folgers coffee song. Oh. Okay, the go morning, ahead. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know it. <laughs> but what we that sing... That one gets me every time. What we sing, rem we remember. And I can remember teaching the children musicals, and one of the reasons I did that is I knew that if I taught these kids the messages of God, those messages would come back up when they needed them. And there are kids who have come back to me and said, I still remember, and they'll give me the lyrics to that. They'll sing it phrases of it. It's wonderful. And, and choir and the musicals, all of those. But when we sing together, together here, we're more likely to remember the message. And those messages are who God is. And I remember just last week, one of the ladies shared a song in my small group, The Goodness of God. I tell you, that song was in my mind every day. I'd wake up with it. I'd be humming it during the day. His goodness is running after, running after me. You know what? That message will come back up to me when I really need it. Amen. And to use for someone else. That's something to remember. Yeah. It's interesting that you bring up scripture and song because I actually just started listening to an album called Scripture in Song. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so if you guys want to look that up on Spotify or online, uh, they put scripture, they sing scripture. Mm -hmm. And it's scripture done in song. And, and I think we're going to get to one at the end of the one of, the, one of the songs yeah, that you use yeah. is I exalt thee. But, we are. Yeah. The other thing, even in the New Testament, said sing and make music to the Lord. It didn't, you know, it, and there's another one that says make a joyful noise to the Lord. And I can remember sitting beside, standing beside Jill Herbert. The girl could not carry a tune. And she was singing right beside me. And I was a worship leader, and I wasn't leading that week, and I was a choir director. And she's singing right beside me with all the confidence she had. And I'm crying, not because it sounded awful, but be <laughs> really, but because her, she was offering her offering to God. Yeah. It blessed me. It really So there's hope. Me. There's hope there for everyone hope. here. There is hope. But there's another thing our singing does, okay? In uh, Colossians 3.16, it says, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and, and songs from the Spirit. Sing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And so as we are singing hymns, and let me tell you, hymns are simply songs that Christians write. Songs that God inspires. So you sang hymns this morning. Now, they might not be the hymns from 1950 or that were written in the 18th or 19th or 20th century, but they're hymns. So when we sing these hymns, we're teaching one another. We're learning and we're teaching one another. Well, the word beautiful? hymns is the word praises or yes. praise. Mm -hmm. So any song that has to do with praising God is considered is a, hymn. a hymn. Yeah. But there's nothing like the classic hymns, too. Well, there. of course, especially yeah. those who grew up on them because God touched us during those hymns and the ones yes. that are special to us are we have an emotional connection to. Yeah. And it's interesting because I, the song we're going to sing here later in a moment. Is an old one. Is an older classic one. It's mm -hmm. not considered a hymn, I don't think, is it? No, it's just a chorus. But it's, it's stuck in my mind mm -hmm. because we sang it when I was a kid and yeah. I can't forget it. 
right. you know, just like you right. said. Mm -hmm. And the words to it are so powerful. I, so. I think when, even yesterday, I was, as I was praying about this and thinking about all that God's done for me in the worship in, inside of the corporate thing, I was just saying, oh God, there are not words. There are not words to say exactly. how, how great it has been. And do you know an old song from the 80s come up? And I won't sing it, but it was, I stand in awe of you. Mm. You're beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words, too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depths of your love? You are beautiful beyond description majesty enthroned above i stand i stand in awe of you some of those songs give voice to our heart and we can sing them because there's they just give expression for something that isn't our normal way of talking is it yeah yeah, yeah. so we have a little bit more time to talk about how should we come to church on sunday mornings what we want to make the most of our Sunday mornings, not necessarily just for our sake, but for God's sake. Now, we gather to worship God first and foremost. And, and you can speak on this if you want to. Um, but the benefit of, of worshiping God is we get something out of it too, which is, it's this weird, uh, just, it's a weird Well, like, it's in giving that you receive. Yeah. Okay. Right, so that even in worship, giving worship. to giving God worship, we're receiving something yes. from it. We're receiving Him, actually. Hmm. We're receiving Him. Yeah. So how how should we come, and how should we come on Sundays? Whether it's this question number three is how do we sing for, to God from our hearts, or how, how do we do get we rid of distractions? Do. What kind of attitude or motive should we bring into Sunday morning? What do you think? Well, I think. Personally, you know, we get more out of it, and I think we're more ready to worship when we're prepared spiritually. And I think you talked about that a couple of weeks ago. As we're abiding and being with Jesus in the Word, as we're seeking Him in our private devotions, as we're living out the Word, living to please Him, those are things that help prepare our hearts to be able to come and be ready to worship. Um, I think the other thing is, uh, you know, when you come in, focus. Pay attention to what you're singing. Engage the mind. It's so easy to be distracted so that, uh, especially some of us, you know, some of us are tend to count the lights or the cracks in the ceiling or the, well, they fix the wall, so you can't do that anymore, praise God. But uh, we get distracted by things, and we need to focus and pay attention because this is precious time. This is time with the God of the universe. And he's coming down to be with us. So I want to make the most of it that I can. So I come spiritually prepared. And even the Israelites um, back then, on the, they prepared for the Sabbath. They knew they couldn't do any work. Okay, so they had to do uh, all their cooking ahead of time. They had to make sure the animals were okay. There were certain things they did so that on the Sabbath, they could spend that time worshiping God and resting as they were supposed to. And I think we can prepare, not just all through the week, but do some special things on Saturday that helps make sure our heart is ready to worship God. And so quietening our minds on Saturday night, be careful about what you watch that can be disturbing because that's happened to me. The next day it's like flashes of some documentary I watched or a movie or something. It's like, okay, I got to watch that because the enemy can bring those things back. But coming prepared and... Um, I actually be, thought yeah. about that. Um, yeah. I thought, I thought about this last night as I was trying to fall asleep early. Yeah. Is maybe getting to bed at a decent time. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so that we are here alert, rested. rested and ready. I even think maybe getting up early before church to read your Bible, to pray. I know that's something pastor does, something I do, mm -hmm. to worship God before we even get here. And I want to suggest, and that's, of course, we have kids. So that can be hard to do sometimes, right? Um, but I want to recommend, too, uh, that we worship God all week through songs, through singing. Mm -hmm. And thank God for, like, Pandora and Spotify where you can listen to all your favorite songs, all your favorite classics, hymns, mm -hmm. whatever you love. Mm -hmm. uh, you can listen to that all week so that by the time we get here, mm -hmm. we've already been yeah. singing, singing praises to God and singing out, you know. Yeah, we're warmed up, so to yeah. speak. We're warmed up, yeah. And it's, it's, it's interesting because we'll come in probably with a different attitude. Yeah. yeah. we are already come in with a thankful heart, a grateful heart. You know, yeah. we've already been praying about things that we need to get off our chest before we get here. But real quick, isn't it okay, though, to come to church 
beat up sometimes too. Like, oh yeah, I that's mean, so interesting you should ask because one of the ladies on Facebook was saying, you know, I need some help, I'm really feeling worn down and uh, send me some scriptures. She says, is it okay to go to church needing restoration? You better believe it yeah. is. I think I've come many times saying, this is a sacrifice of praise, God. <laughs> I didn't feel like it in what, I'd been beat down, you know, whatever it is, yeah. I'm gonna praise him anyway. And, um, but yes, because it's, what was so interesting is she knew where to go to fellow Christians to ask for, send me some scriptures to the body of Christ, and they did. And they ministered to her, and one lady was just discipling her. Um, I think it was Jeanette Mitchell, if you're here today, I don't know. But she let her know, hey, you can go to Jesus right now, exactly. and he will restore you. You know, she was telling her what to That's do. Good. It was so neat, but she knew where to go. So there are going to be times that we're going to come in and we feel beaten up. This is the best place to be. Yeah. Let your brothers and sisters love on you. Let their voices praising God refresh you. Let the Holy Spirit just wash over you, breathe on you, breathe new life. Wow. Yes, we need it. We need it. So yeah. we're getting down to the to end here, which is sad because I'm really yeah, enjoying this. Yeah, we had this. a lot. <laughs> and we had more questions. We gave you all the answers, too, in your outlines just in case this happened. Um, so takeaways, anything that you would love to, I, I feel like you've been pouring out a lot of good stuff here. Like we're gonna have to rewatch this on YouTube sometime, which I don't know if you guys know, but we have all of our sermons on YouTube uh, if you search Calvary Dover, but I'm interested in hearing this again. Uh, what could you leave us with, you know, besides the song we're gonna sing, what, any takeaways that you would challenge us to? I do have some takeaways, but I think they need to hear a story. Okay. Is that okay with that you? sounds great. Um, back in the early 2000s, Gail Bachman, who was a member of our church, um, she got cancer, and she was an introvert. And I would, as I was leading worship, I'd see her out there, and she wasn't really engaged. But something happened. Sometime in that journey, two and a half years of cancer, she changed. I'd look out, and I remember her sitting right over here, and instead of arms down by her side and hardly singing, her arms were both lifted towards heaven and her head up, and she was singing with all her heart. And when it was time to clap, she was clapping. She was engaged. And three weeks before she was promoted to heaven, I went to visit her, and she said, Angela, I want people to know, before cancer, I was just a go-to-church on Sunday Christian. He says, but during cancer, I got to know him. I pressed in to know him. That's what she was saying. I really know him. And you know what? She fell in love with the God who was taking her through the dark valley. And those arms were raised. And there are positions and postures that we need for receiving what God has. And sometimes it's hard for people. So I would say take baby steps in your postures. If you're not there yet, I was blessed last week by seeing someone down here, and he's an introvert, and his, his, his arms were like this. And to, for a drama person, some of you know who've had me, arms up at least by your side like this, that's engaging. He was engaging to the point he could, and I was blessed by it. And I can remember one of our people who, for years, you know, he, that raising arms is just not something for me, but eventually he got to the place where he could raise his arms. And maybe it was just this high. That's okay. That's okay. So um, take baby steps. We don't, you know, get, getting into the water, expressing yourself physically. And uh, let me look at my takeouts because I thought my, my takeaways were pretty good here. <laughs> okay. Come expecting... Come expecting. Expecting is like you're leaning forward. Your back might not even be in the seat. I'm leaning forward to see what is God going to do. And if you want a story on that, go to my Facebook page or uh, my website, AngelaMCoon.com. Uh, yeah, and I tell them when I uh, stole away to church without my parents. And, uh, you know, because I was expecting Jesus. And things happen when you come expecting. Realize it's not about me, even though I desperately need him. Okay, and there are times I ask myself, why are you coming to church? And today, you know, it might be, I desperately need you. I need your touch, God. And other times it's like, God, I, I just feel like I'm full, but I'm coming to worship you. I'm coming to give you glory. I'm coming to celebrate you, you know? 
fall deeply in love with Jesus and his word so you're free to worship through praise and serving to the fullest. Fall love with, in love with him and you'll see your worship change. And I said, take baby steps if you have to, but whatever God prompts you in worship or in the word, do it. Take that next step as quickly as you can because all the power you need to do it is right there. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Can I, I read one quote that, um, that I said? Um, let me make sure I can find it here. I'm sorry. Worship is a whole person experience. Heart and soul, body and mind, hands and feet, arms and knees, voice and will, skills, gifts, times, yes, and even our tithes and offerings. The more I fall in love with him, the more, and the more he has of me, the more I'll give in fully worshiping him. And that, I hope that quote's in your, yes, it is. It's on your outline, so you've got that. Good, that's what awesome. Do, you want to stand together and us sing that song I exalted? Yeah, share, share a little bit of what we're singing. Like, tell us real quick the message okay. in this song. The message in this song is just simply, you know, I exalt thee, I'm exalting you above, all other gods, anyone else in the world, you are the greatest, you are the king. I exalt you, for you are high and lifted up. Praise Amen. the Lord. Always stand Let's together. Stand. Some of you will remember this, and for some of you, it's going to be uh, brand new. Praise the Lord. start with the 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 chorus I exalt thee and greatly to be praised. 
You are holy and just, righteous and true. You are faithful, faithfulness, and your faithfulness reaches to the heavens, and your mercies are renewed morning by morning by morning. You are higher, O God. Be exalted in our lives today in this week. Be exalted and lifted high in our choices and our thoughts, Lord, and draw us, continue to run after us, God, and help us to draw near to you. And, oh, God, have your way in our lives this week. Purify and refine our worship of you. Draw us in close and bless. May we come together each week, God, ready to give you all the glory that you deserve, God, to bless your holy name. We thank you for your presence here today and what you're doing in our lives. Now be blessed through us this week, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. God bless you. Uh.